गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद चैप्टर डायरेक्ट एंड इनवर्स वेरिएशन नाउ इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द डिपेंडेंस ऑफ वन क्वांटिटी ऑन द अदर क्वांटिटी नाउ व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डायरेक्ट थिंग डायरेक्ट वेरिएशन मींस दैट द सेम सॉर्ट ऑफ चेंज विल बी देयर एंड द वर्ड इनवर्स रेफर्स टू एन अपोजिट चेंज What does that mean now? Uh, I believe you are already done with the chapter of uh, force and pressure in physics. So I am going to quote the example from physics, though it is a mathematics class, but then we can relate it with physics. The formula for pressure in case of solids is given by force upon area. Now what you need to understand in here is that the pressure in solids. is directly proportional to force now what is this proportional it means that if the force is going to increase then what will happen to pressure pressure will also increase that means the same sort of change will be there if the force is increased the pressure is also increased so what variation are we talking about we are talking about the direct variation similarly if i talk about area now area is in the denominator in the formula pressure is equal to force upon area now area if you talk about if we increase area this time the pressure on the other hand is going to decrease and vice versa that means if we are going to decrease the area the pressure is going to increase like it happens in the case of a thumb pin when we try to put it in a wooden board it is put into the board whether it's pointed end now because the area is less automatically the pressure increases so what is this variation this is inverse variation that means an opposite change will be there one increases the other decreases and vice versa the same thing we are going to talk about in mathematics in this particular chapter So let's proceed further with the actual exercise. I believe you are getting the concept. We are going to talk about the direct variation that means the same sort of change in both the quantities and inverse variation in which an opposite change will be there. I'm going to start with question number 2 and the exercise number here is 1. So we are on exercise one for direct and inverse variation so i'm going to start with question number 2 kindly see the book the question says a person earns rupees 5100 in 3 weeks now there are two quantities given that means the time duration in weeks and the money earned so i'm going to write the statement for the this given question in the form of columns i have the money earned by the person as one heading and the time given in weeks so they are saying again i am going to read the statement a person earns rupees 5100 the money given is 5100 in how many weeks they are saying he is earning it in Three weeks. Now the first part of the question says, "How long will it take him to earn rupees sixty-eight hundred?" So I am talking about the first part. So they have already given that uh, he has to earn how much uh, rupees? He has to earn sixty-eight hundred rupees. And they are asking how long will it take for him to earn this money? So whatever is unknown, whatever we have to find, we are going to take it as x. and we are going to write suppose because this is one of the assumption we are making it is not given in the question but we have to find it now how to solve this type of question here we are going to find the variation first what variation means that whether the quantities are varying directly or in the inverse way directly or indirectly so i am going to compare the unknown thing with the known thing when the person was working for 
three weeks he was earning fifty one hundred rupees. Let me say it in another words: fifty one hundred rupees are earned by a person when he works for this much of time. He is doing whatever work he is doing. If he has to earn more, does he does he have to work for more days or less days, more weeks or less weeks? Obviously, when the money is less, the time is three weeks. He has worked for three weeks. If the money is increased, that is obviously meaning that the number of weeks have also increased. So what is this? This is direct variation. Why? Because if this quantity is increasing, the other quantity is also increasing. I am explaining it one more time. When the person is earning fifty one hundred rupees, he is working for three weeks. Now he has to earn more. That means he has to work for longer time. So how to solve this question? We put an arrow towards the unknown variable first. The first step is to put an arrow towards the unknown variable. And once you have checked that this is direct variation, why this is direct variation? Because when the money will increase, the number of weeks will also increase. So you are going to mention that this is direct variation because the quantity is varying. Directly with the other quantity. So, in the case of direct variation, the arrow will point in the same direction for the second quantity also. Understand it again. Whenever we have a direct variation, that means same sort of change is happening. We are going to put an arrow towards the unknown variable first. The same direction will be taken for the arrow to be put in the second column for the second quantity. Now we are going to frame an equation. Using this representation, how to frame an equation? Remember, equation means we should have a left side, we should have a right side, and equal to symbol in between. We always start from the unknown side. Wherever you see the arrow head, that becomes the numerator, and wherever you see the tail of the arrow, that becomes the denominator. So, like I said, I am going to start from the unknown side. So, what is the first thing that I get? It is numerator upon denominator. How did I frame it? Arrow head is the numerator, tail is the denominator. Here comes the equal symbol. I'm going to pick the second quantity now. The concept remains the same. Arrow head will be the numerator. So what do we have as the numerator? We have sixty-eight hundred, and the tail gives you the denominator. So we have fifty-one hundred. Now this is an equation that I have framed out of this question, and I believe everybody knows how to solve this. In order to find the value of this unknown variable, we can take the denominator on the other side. Here it is in division. On the other side, it will be in multiplication. So what do we have? X is equal to these two zeros can be directly cancelled here. Sixty-eight upon fifty-one into three. Now we are going to simplify it further. Fifty-one is divisible by three, so I am going to cancel it. Three ones are three. Three ones are three. Two is left. So it is three seventy twenty one. Now we have to see whether sixty eight is divisible by seventeen. Seventeen is a prime number, and if you read the table of seventeen, seventeen into one, seventeen into four. So the answer for x is equal to four, and we have to write the unit also because we are calculating the number of weeks. It will be four weeks as the final answer. I hope you have understood this question. In this question, we have framed the quantities in form of columns. First, two quantities were talked about. One was the money earned. Second was the time duration in weeks. And then I have assumed the unknown thing as x. And then I started putting the arrow. After checking the variation, I have put the arrow in the same direction. If it could have been the Inverse variation, the arrow for the second quantity will be directed in the opposite direction. Otherwise, the frame of the equation remains the same. Wherever you see the arrow head, that becomes the numerator, and wherever you see the tail, that becomes the denominator. So, with this question, uh, if you have understood it, you will be able to do question number one also. It is exactly the same. So, kindly make it sure that you do it. There is another part of this question, so I am going to do the second part of this question number two. So let's uh, do the second part of the same question. So 
see the number of steps are going to remain the same so if you get habitual of writing it it will be good for you and like I have told you in the previous classes also that there are number of ways to solve the same question but the ways should be logical so I am going to continue with the second part of question number 2 in the second part they are saying how much does he earn in 5 weeks again the columns will be the money earned by the person and the number of weeks as the time duration the initial value given in the question will remain the same he was earning 5100 rupees in how many weeks 3 weeks that we that is given in the question now in the second part they are saying how much time will he take to how much money he will earn in 5 weeks so this time the time is given in weeks and we have to calculate the money earned so whatever has to be found I am going to assume it as x and yes I am going to write suppose because this is an assumption like we usually write that let the money be x but here once you are writing the statement it becomes easy in the column form you can always write suppose which means that you have assumed it the first thing I am going to do is I am going to put an arrow directed towards the unknown variable now I am going to check the variation from the known to unknown in 3 weeks the person earns 5100 rupees think about it now if I increase the number of weeks for the person means he has to work more will he earn more money or less money obviously if the number of weeks are going to increase that means the person is doing more work so he will earn more money what does that mean when the weeks are increasing the money is also increasing what sort of variation is this it is again direct variation so how will I direct the arrow the arrow will be directed in the same direction and I am going to write this is direct variation again it is direct variation so the next step to frame the equation equation is always framed from the unknown side arrow head is the numerator tail is the denominator so we have x upon 5100 on the other side 5 as the numerator and 3 as the denominator because arrow head is always the numerator again in order to get the value of x you can take 5100 on the other side what happens now 3 1's are 3 3 7's are 21 double zero now the final answer will be rupees 5 into 0 is 0 5 7's are 35 5 1's are 5 plus 3 is 8 so the answer should be rupees 8500 that means this particular person is going to earn how much money he is going to earn 8500 rupees in how many weeks in 5 weeks so this is how in the second question we have found the value of uh, the amount earned in the first part and no in the first part we have uh, found the time duration and in the second part we have found the amount earned by him in the same manner we are going to continue with the next question okay the next question that we are going to discuss is question number three of the same exercise can you see the question in the book they are saying if 3 by 5 of a plot of land cost rupees 75,120 what will 7 by 20 of the plot cost remember these questions can be done by the unitary method also but I want you to go with only one method that will be helpful because if you are going to use two different methods you might can get confused so I am going to recommend that you go with only one method that is the arrow method that I have shown you so uh, there are two quantities they are talking about the part of the plot and the cost of it so I am taking the heading as the plot and the cost fine so given statement is that 3 by 5 of the plot the cost is given as 75120 They want us to find the value of 7 by 20 of the plot. So let us say the value is x that we have done in the previous question. And this is our assumption so I am writing suppose. So actually we have to find the value of x in here. That means the cost of the given part of the plot. So the first arrow is always directed towards the unknown variable and we are going to check the variation for it 
Now if 3 by 5 of the plot has the cost equal to 75120, we should know which one is greater first. So in order to find that which one is greater, we are going to do a bit of work in the rough column. So in the rough column, I want you all to find the greater out of these two fractions. Now how to find the greater out of these two fractions? If you somehow make the denominator of this fraction similar to this fraction, then you can easily compare the numerator part. How to make this fraction equal to this fraction? You know in the denominator we have 20. What should be multiplied to 5 to make it 20? We can multiply it by 4. But we cannot simply multiply 4 here. We have to multiply it in the numerator also. So if I want to change the denominator, let's say this is the rough column which I am making. One of the fraction is 7 by 20 and I want to make 3 by 5 equivalent. So what will I do? I have to multiply 4 here to make it 20. So I am going to multiply it in the numerator also so that there is no change in the fraction. Okay. So what will I get? 3 into 4 is equal to 12, 5 into 4 is equal to 20. So now if this 3 by 5 is actually 12 by 20, we can compare these two. Which one is greater? Obviously the numerator, wherever it is greater, is going to be greater. I am writing it here as your uh, uh, means, as a hint that this is actually equal to 12 by 20. So if I compare it, which one is greater? The denominator is same. So wherever the numerator is more, that value is more. That means this was more and this is less. So this is what you should know. Now we are going to compare them. So we already know that 3 by 5 is greater than 7 by 20. So when the plot was more, the cost was this. Now if the plot is less, will the cost be less or more? Understand it like this. I had a bit of plot and the cost was 75, 120. I have decreased the area of the plot. Will it cost me more or less? Obviously, if I am purchasing less amount of plot, my money amount which I have to pay will also be less. That means if this is in decreasing, this will also decrease. So what sort of variation is this? This is again direct variation. So I am going to put the arrow in the same direction. I am going to write this as direct variation. The next step to frame the equation. Always start from the unknown side. So it is x upon 75120 equal to the numerator will be the arrowhead. So it is 7 by 20 upon the tail that is the denominator. Now upon means division. So in place of writing upon because it is already a fraction I am writing division. So what will come in here? It will be 3 upon 5. So let's simplify it further. X remains X. It will be 7 by 20. This division sign can be changed into multiplication. What happens? It is reciprocal. So it is 5 upon 3. And this denominator goes to the other side. So it will also be multiplied. So it will be 7, 5, 1, 2, 0 in the numerator. So let us uh, perform the cancellation part. This 0 can be directly cancelled by this 0. 7 plus 5 is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13, 13 plus 2 is 15, so it is divisible by 3. So 3 1 is a 3, 3 2 is a 6, 1 is left, 3 5 is a 15, 0, 3 4 is a 12. Now this 2 can also be cancelled one time and it will be 2 1 is a 2, 2 2 is a 4, 2 5 is a 10, 2 2 is a 4. So what do we have at the end? We have 7 into 5 that is 35 into 1 2 5 2. So let us calculate the final value and uh, for that we have to do it in the rough column. So I am going to do it in the rough column. Let me raise this. I hope you have understood why I made this rough column earlier. Okay. So I am going to perform the multiplication of 1 to 5 2 with 35. So it is 1 to 5 2 into 35. 5 to the 10. 5 has a 25 plus 1 is 26. 5 to the 10 plus 2 is 12. 5 on the 5 plus 1 is 6. 3 to the 6. 3 5 is a 15. 3 to the 6 1 7. 3 1 is a 3. Adding it now 0. 6 plus 6 is 12. 3 plus 5 is 8. 6 plus 7 is 13. 
this is 4. So the final answer comes equal to rupees 43820. So this becomes my final answer. So the cost of the given amount of plot that is 7 by 20 will come equal to rupees 43820. I believe you have understood it. And now we are going to proceed further with question number 5. So like I said, uh, the next question is question number 5 of the same exercise. Kindly see the question in the book. They are saying if 8 men can do a job in 5 days. So the two things that we are talking about is the number of men and the time which they are taking. That means the number of days. They are saying 8 men they take how many days? They take 5 days to do a particular job. Now they are asking how much time would uh, 10 men take to do the same job. So now the number of men is 10. They want us to find that how many days they will take to complete the work. That means in place of 8 men, if 10 men are there working for the same job, will they take less number of days or more number of days and we have to calculate the number of days also. So our assumption is let the number of days taken by 10 men is x. So our first step remains the same. I am going to put an arrow directed towards the unknown variable. Now I am going to check the variation. Understand it from known to unknown I am going to check it. 8 people were there doing one job. They took 5 days. Means 5 days were required to complete the job. Now I have increased the manpower. Means the number of people working on the same job have been increased. Will they take less time or will they take more time? Obviously, they are going to take less time. Because more people are there, the work can be completed in less time. What does that mean? When the number of men is increasing, the number of days is decreasing. One is increasing, the other is decreasing. Is it direct? No, it is not. It is inverse. So I'm going to write this as inverse variation. Did you understand why it is inverse? Because when the number of men is increasing, the number of days will surely decrease. So it is inverse variation. Now what happens in the case of inverse variation? The arrow is directed towards the other direction. Here the arrow is directed towards the bottom. So on the other side, it will go towards the upper surface that means it will be directed up. So now the framing of the equation will remain the same. I am going to start from the unknown side. Therefore x upon 5. Why? Because arrowhead is the numerator and tail is the denominator. Here also I am going to do the same thing. Equal sign comes arrowhead is the numerator. So no changes here. Wherever you see the arrowhead is the numerator and tail is the denominator. I am going to simplify it now by taking 5 to the other side. So here it is in the denominator on the other side if I take it, it will go in the numerator and it will get multiplied. Now the cancellation is possible, 5 into 1 is 5, 5 into 2 is 10, 2 into 1 is 2, 2 into 4 is 8. So what is the value of x? x is 4. And what were we calculating? We were calculating the number of days. So this becomes my final answer. So in this question instead of direct variation we have the inverse variation. I believe you are able to understand this question and we are going to proceed further with question number 6. So let's do question number 6 quickly. So in this chapter uh, like I have to already told you we are talking about either the direct variation or the inverse variation. Direct variation when the same sort of change is there. One increases the other also increases. One decreases, the other also decreases. Whereas inverse variation is opposite change. So let us continue with question number 6 now. Can you see it in the book? They are saying a camp of 1000 soldiers has enough food for 180 days. So what are the two quantities they are talking about? They are talking about the number of soldiers and for how long the food is lasting. That means the number of days. So when this number of soldiers are 1000, the food lasts for how many days? 180 days. This is the given statement. Now they are saying if 600 more soldiers join the camp, 
after 20 days how long will the remaining food last so now there is a twist in the story they are saying for after 20 days 600 more soldiers join in but it happens after how many days after 20 days the food was there for how many days it was there for 180 days so actually how many uh, days uh, for which the food is going to last it is going to last for now 180 minus 20 days because the food is still for how many soldiers it is 4000 soldiers but now the number of soldiers are how many they are 1000 plus 600 so what is the value it is 1600 and let us say that the food lasts for x days now let's suppose what are the number of days in here it will be 160 days so this is the new value remember what happened why i have uh, written 180 minus 20 days here this is the main thing that you need to understand actually the number of soldiers if they were thousand the food which is stored for them is going to last for 180 days but 20 days have already passed so don't you think that these thousand soldiers have already consumed the food of 20 days so the food is left for how many days now it is left for 180 minus 20 that is 160 days so now we have this situation currently after 20 days what do we have the food is there for thousand soldiers and it is going to last for 160 days because 20 days are already over now what happens 600 more soldiers join the camp so what is the total number of soldiers now 1600 they are asking us that for how many days the food is going to last so the first thing first the arrow is directed towards the unknown side and then we are going to compare it if the food lasts for 160 days when the number of soldiers is are thousand if I am going to increase the number of soldiers will the food last for lesser days or for more days obviously the food will be over in quick time it will be over in less time fine that means it will not go till 160 days it will be over soon so that means if the number of soldiers are increasing the number of days for which the food will last is going to decrease so what sort of variation is it this is inverse variation again understand why it is inverse variation the food which was left for thousand soldiers will last for 160 days because 20 days are already over but now the surprise package is that 600 more soldiers join in number of soldiers increased will the food last for these many days no it will be over soon so that's why when the soldiers are increasing the number of days for which the food will last will decrease one increases the other decreases it is inverse variation opposite changes there so where will be the arrow directed the arrow will be directed in the opposite direction now framing the equation starting from the unknown side therefore x upon 160 why 160 because 20 days are already over and here it will be equal to 1000 upon 1600 why so arrowhead is the numerator tail is the denominator Cancelling wherever possible. So here directly two zeros can be cancelled. So x will be equal to 10 upon 16 into 160. 16 minus 16 into 0. Not into 0, it is 16 into 10, 160. So 10 into 10 is 100. So for how many days the food will last? The food will last for 100 days. Instead of lasting in 160 days, the food will be over quickly. And it will be over in how many days? It will be over in 100 days. So this becomes my final answer. Now students, you must have understood that how the questions are to be solved in this particular exercise. Though I said you can also use the unitary method. But it's better that you use only one method. You stick to one method. That is the arrow method. If you have any sort of query related to it, you can always post your query, the genuine query, as a comment under the post which I am going to make today. Fine? So your task for the day is whatever question I have discussed are to be done in the fair register and the remaining questions are to be attempted in a rough notebook. Okay, so we have completed from question number one to question number six. All the questions that I have discussed will be done in the fair register and the remaining questions are to be attempted in a rough notebook. So kindly keep your work completed class. Take care of yourself. Thank you so much.